So we're here with Antonello Bonci, who's the director, the scientific director of NIDA. Uh, first of all, what is NIDA the acronym of? So it's the acronym of the National Institute on Drug Abuse, which is the government scientific organization that studies every side of substance abuse and abuse of food, for example, or everything that we have to face. So. What are the main new types of abuses, if so we want to call them, or, or uh, um, uh, reasons uh, that cause uh, addictions that you're studying, that you're focusing your work on at the moment? So the main one actually whose really emergency right now in the US and in many other parts of the world is food dependent behaviors and addiction to food. So feeding behaviors are becoming especially obesity, but also anorexia, I have to say. Every dysfunction related to food and the brain areas that are controlling food are becoming a great topic of study in the US right now. And we are really trying to understand both the basic mechanisms that are creating this kind of uh, addiction and also uh, try to find some, some cures or some treatments for this kind of very devastating disease. And of course, the synthetic drugs, which are ex Oxycontin, oxycodone. Oh, well, yeah, prescription Oxycodone. drugs, absolutely, but also all the new synthetic drugs like We're this. Uh, exactly. Everything that, unfortunately, young kids tend to take for very little money and abuse it, and with really devastating consequences. Of course. So it seems like uh, you're confirming that there's a neurological uh, relation between uh, an addiction and, uh, and the human being. How much, in what proportion do you think that nature, i.e. the DNA, and nurture, i.e. the environment, plays a role in developing an addiction? Well, they are both playing major roles. Um, we know that certain receptor genes can make you, for example, more vulnerable to becoming addicted, which means that by knowing the genetics and of course, the environment as well plays a major role because certain environments have been proven to basically create a much higher percentage of teenagers, for example, becoming addicted. So it is a mix of genetics, it is a mix of pharmacology, of course, and it is a mix of environment. Um, one last question for you. Um, you were telling me that uh, um, you come from this area. Uh, you live in Washington, D.C., United States of America. How does it feel like to be back here? And what do you think, how do you, where, where do you think that San Patrignano fits within this macro perspective of uh, studies on addiction? So it feels great to be back home, of course. I'm so happy to be here and coming from DC, back home invited by an amazing structure and actually a unique reality as San Patrignano is. I really think that I wish there were more structures, even in the US, that have the same uh, approach to treating addiction, for example, because it is not a short-term, five weeks detox process. This is much more complex, as you guys know very well, than how some people think. It takes time. It can be absolutely cured and helped, but uh, this reality, I think, is very unique. I think throughout the world, there are very few places and too few places that use this same approach of very long-term treatment from every side and every point of view of the, the subject. So I wish there was more, there were more Sapatrignano all over, actually. One very last question for you. Uh, we, we've talked about synthetic drugs, we've talked about illegal drugs, legal uh, pharmaceutical drugs that are abused, though. Don't you feel that uh, put, uh, possibly the international community is paying less and less attention to, um, for example, alcoholism, because it's a very potent drug it's the one that kills probably more people than any of the other drugs, and at the same time, it's legal. Um, isn't there maybe too little attention on cigarettes, and nicotine, uh, mainly tar, or you know the other ingredients in nicotine that causes that cause lung cancer, and alcohol, whereas we pay more attention to a slightly you know smaller um, spectrum of addiction. Uh, uh, that's a very good question. From a perception point of view, you are right. If you look at the media, it feels as if we are paying more attention to smaller problems, such as these new drugs. But in reality, in terms of money invested in science, for example, for alcoholism, there is a, an entire institute at NIH which studies only alcoholism. And for all the old drugs, if you will, the amount of money that we invest is absolutely huge, except you're right. 
when you look at the median perception, it fails because we are talking more about the new drugs that the old big problems such as alcoholism or smoke are less important. But it's just a matter of perception actually. The investment is absolutely much stronger on those drugs right now. So it's, uh, it is there. It doesn't show as much as the new drugs. Yeah. Thank you very much. It's been a, a real pleasure talking to you. Thank you.